As you guys like my educational videos so much, I decided to do another one of those type of videos. It's like a small talk talking about some mistakes and one of the kind of big mistakes that people make in the stock market and what I personally do to avoid those uh, mistakes. So again, these kind of videos, they don't get a lot of views. So all I ask, if you enjoy it, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing if you're actually new uh, to the channel. All right. Now, this is the biggest one and it's the most important one. And this is one of the reasons I named my channel The Patient Investor is because most people, they don't have patience. I don't mean by patience to hold a stock for 50 years. By patience, I mean they get too excited whenever the stock goes up and they get mad whenever the stock goes going down. Now, why does this even happen? And so many people do it, even big and popular YouTubers, people on Twitter. Why do people even do that stuff? Well, in my opinion, it's because they don't have confidence in their own thesis. They don't know the value of what they own. What did Peter Lynch say? Know what you own. If you do your valuation model on a stock and you think it's worth $100, all right, and let's assume we're having a recession right now, the stock misses on earnings, the stock is now worth $80, but the share price goes from $100 to $50. So it's down, I don't know, around 50%. But again, the value is still 80. So why would you be mad if your stock is going down? if you really know the value of the business, of what you have stock into, because stocks are pieces of businesses. So why would you be mad whenever your stock goes down? If it's still below intrinsic value, you would just buy more uh, no matter what. But again, most people, they don't know the value of what they own. Therefore, they get too pessimistic whenever their stock go down. And it's the same thing with the, you know, with the market. Most investors, they like to follow the market. You know, if the market is going down, they get too pessimistic. If the market is going up, they get too optimistic. They let the market lead them instead of their own thesis leading them. And you may say, you know, what are you even uh, talking about? All right. Well, this is a perfect example that I talked about many, many times. If you search the word market crash, Every single YouTuber is doing stock market crash videos and is mentioning Michael Burry. Now, if you remember last year, Michael Burry was one of the most hated people. And I'm sure you remember that. They called him a boomer. He doesn't understand Tesla. He doesn't understand Bitcoin or any technology. They called him a broken clock. This is what they called Michael Burry and, you know, a boomer or whatever. Well, why now does now everyone love him and why do they hate Cassie Wood? because he's right, but it's already too late. Like, just look at this video, it started. You know, the market crash was already crashing, was crashing, crashing a year ago. But this is how people are. Very few people were making those videos, you know, last year. Last year, I was making bullish Michael Burry videos and bearish Cassie Wood, you know, videos since September, when I was saying why Michael Burry is right on the, you know, market bubble. I did another one in September also. The market was, I believe, 46 or 4700. ARC was over $120. And I said the real reason why Michael Burry shorted Tesla and ARC. And it was very an unpopular opinion. But again, now as we crashed, people love Michael Burry and they hate the growth stocks that they loved last year, even though they are down. 60 or 70 percent this is now the time to actually maybe looking in some of those gross name and buying them i would not be judging anyone who's even looking into those names you know because everyone loved them last year and just because they went down they don't love them anymore this is not you know how i invest and this is again a big mistake people make is they just get too emotional and they follow you know the market for example even though when this is the time you should be buying and i'm personally buying in my own portfolio very very slowly you keep seeing those market crash videos like it's the end of the world even though we've been crashing since you know since 2021 it doesn't mean it cannot get worse but again you know it hasn't started it has been going a year ago but most people didn't see that last year why because the market was, you know, going up and they don't have enough uh, conviction and confidence in themselves to actually say that the opposite is going to happen. And another big mistake that investors make, in my opinion, is again, with the whole thing about being patient, they like to uh, FOMO. For example, I get this comment uh, in the comments and he said, have you made money in stocks? This is the question. If you're always bearish, when do you pull the trigger? Never. Again, this is what people, they've been taught. The cost basis doesn't matter. 
you just buy at any price if you think palantir is going to 500 you can buy palantir at 20 dollars at 10 dollars or 5 dollars it doesn't matter because palantir is going to 100 or or a thousand well what if this doesn't happen what where is the margin of safety what are you doing i mean this is just you know what people do now what i personally do to manage my own emotions and stick to my discipline i just look at my valuation model the one i have here on on youtube and then you know i determine a fair value let's assume it's 35 dollars for square stock or block and now square is at 45 now many people would buy it because they think you know that it's gonna go up more it will never go to 35 well, those are people who don't have confidence in themselves. And again, they let the market tell them what to do. Instead of their own thesis guiding them, they let the market guide them. So what I do, if I think it's for $35, I put a $35 price alert in my own broker. Whenever the stock reaches 35, then I open a small position. I don't foam and go all in because I think the stock is going to skyrocket and I'm going to miss the boat. I don't care about missing the boat. I care about discipline and not losing my capital. So I open a small position. When the stock goes down, I add more. And this helps really manage my emotions. If my stock is going down and I know the fair value of the stock and I didn't go all in, this way I get happy whenever my stock goes down. Because I can average down on a position and never really, you know, kind of be worried that, oh, it's going down today. Well, I just buy more because I haven't built my position. My position is only small and I have uh, cash on the sideline. But this is not what you've been taught by people. You've been taught to FOMO, to let the market guide you. Again, now all the market crash videos. I'm sure after we bought them and we start going up, you would maybe, you know, see a, a lot of kids still saying a lot of stock market crash videos until, you know, we make a new high, then they talk about the new bull market. And this is just, you know, uh, the way it is. And if you're a follower and not a leader, in my opinion, it's really hard to be uh, successful in the market. So this is my short video for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. And I hope to see you in another video.